Felix here. Good morning to you. This is a big day. We've got big news. We've got big data and it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be very good. But we also want to look at the warning signs that Wall Street are sending out, go through some data points. So you are like the best informed investor out there and you can make more money. I'll also give you an actual trade. We'll walk through some trade ideas together as well, um, which are particularly interesting for what's happening right here, right now. So shall we get cracking? Let's get cracking. Smash the you know what and thank you for tuning in. Before we get cracking, make sure you uh, give yourself an hour. Give an hour of your life to yourself to get to financial freedom and sign up for our live trading training on the coming Wednesday down here. You can see it uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time and I'll teach you 75% probability trading. I'll teach you how it's just one stock, just three rules, the simplest thing in the world, and how anybody can make an income from it. So join me. Now, this is the big stuff, the timely stuff that's just come out. And then we look out a little bit more in depth, actually a lot more in depth, what's really going on here. So let's color code, or code this like we're six, shall we? Now, we're going to color code this from the point of view of a cold-hearted stock investor, which is what you and I are. Uh, and what are we looking at here? We're looking at inflation numbers, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, the kind of inflation number that makes Jerome Powell break out in song, you know, and say, go on, get to the good sherry out today and, and let's have some. Core PCE price inflation, that's, that's like Christmas to Jerome Powell. We we're expecting that to come in at 0.2 to 0.3%. It came in on the low end here, 0.2%. That's good news. Personal income, well, it came in also at the low end of expectation. And you know what? That's good news. Not for ordinary people who are getting paid less than inflation, no, but for the us stock market people, for us people, especially in tech stocks, it's good news. Personal spending, we we're thinking it was going to come in at 0.4%. It came in at 0.2%. Now, that's good news for most stocks, perhaps with the exception of some of the retail guys out there, right? Your Walmarts, your Macy's, your, your Amazons, and so on. But why is it good news? Because it's Fed friendly. There is a little sherry party going on at the Fed right now going, oh my God, we've done it. We've destroyed wealth. We've destroyed spending. We've destroyed jobs. And jobless claims are ever so slightly higher than expected. So that's also yeah, sort of neither here nor there. Uh, but headline inflation, and that's the juicy one, what the idiotic newspapers will jump on and about, which is actually less important than the core one. But anyway, it's zero. Inflation, zero. Null. Nichts, nada. You know, you get the idea. And that's good. That's very, very good. Because it gives the Fed an impetus to definitely not raise rates again. And to maybe, 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 maybe start thinking about what they might want to put in their Christmas stockings for us uh, in terms of rate cuts. And then the really juicy one is continuing jobless claims, which has been stubbornly manipulated, sorry, stubbornly stuck at this very, very low level to make sure that the incumbent um, Muppet in the White House stays there. The Labour Department has done a very good job with that. But look, we're expecting 1.8 million something unemployed. We got 1.9 million. Yes, more people on the... No, it's, it's not a good thing to celebrate, is it? It really isn't. But the stock market is going to freaking love it. That's the weird thing, isn't it? It's really weird sometimes, morals. So if you look at pre-market, it's just, uh, well, it, was, it wasn't looking as green as it is right now, but Amazon a little down here, but overall, we're, we're, looking, we're looking okay. We're looking okay. So this is helpful. It has lifted futures, and I think it'll probably do a bit more of that as um, all the bankers wake up from their um, coke-induced hangovers. Did I just say that? I should take it all back. Bankers, never. No, no, no. Don't do drugs, children. Uh, so good news. It's good news. It's very good news. It's Fed friendly. It basically means we definitely no longer need to believe that rates are going to go any higher. Uh, rate cuts seem to be on the way. As long as the data stays something like this, 
Santa is going to bring you lovely presents. Even if you've been very, very, very naughty by not smashing the like button, 300 of you who haven't, you can lose a whole calorie with that like, simple activity. You're pacing around all day long, counting 10,000 steps on your phone. All you're going to do is press the like button. You know, you're done. So it's so that easy. Now, Shall we have a look at what actually went on so far in 2023, what we can learn from it and the traits we can use to make money right now? So 2023 has been a funny one. We've had banking crises. We've had uh, the AI boom, which kind of bailed us out. Well, the Fed did it too. We've had markets seriously chasing Whatever the narrative of the day, so today it's lower inflation, higher unemployment, woohoo, um, and the market chases it every single day. That's not normal. If you've been in this for a little bit longer than the last two years, this is not normal. We don't usually care that much about the daily momentum. But at the moment in this year, and in my view going forward, it's going to continue to be that way, and I'll explain to you exactly why. So what can we learn? to make more money now? That's really the question, isn't it? Let's, let's get into it, okay? So I'm going to run you through a few through. I'm going to run you through. Um, I'm not going to stab you, uh, but I am going to walk you through a few data points because you need to understand these. These are from Bank of America's um, research paper out today or yesterday. And these are important. It's a bloody long paper. I'll only give you the important ones, okay? COVID was an event that we've never seen before. It was the biggest shock to the economy we've seen like ever, World War II kind of stuff. And what we've seen is that GDP growth, how much it fluctuates by quarter to quarter in the last three years has been like 9% difference. That doesn't usually happen, right? You can see that from the 80s onwards, it was usually sort of up or down 2%, no, up or down 9% insanity. And that brought with it a heck of a lot of volatility. And here you can see the COVID shock, complete insanity. So the question is, are we returning to these sort of moderate movements or is it going to stay, you know, higher for longer, to borrow a phrase there? Well, what you're really seeing and this is, again, super, super unusual. This is not something that I saw in the previous five or 10 years, is that rallies, short-term rallies, sort of day-to-day -day or week-to-week, -week, are massive and unexpected. And typically, they're positive. That's kind of the weird thing. So in the past, you would have always thought, you're not going to get massive breakouts to the top. Yeah, you could get massive crashes, but usually it's, the other way around. At the moment, all of through this year, look at all the positive five-day return days. You know, it's all green, 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 right? Or this one here, FOMC meeting November, right? Insane. Five, six percent in five days. Just bizarre. This never, never happens. So the market is in a weird place where if there is a little bit of good news, Everybody out there, everybody, your grandmas, hedge fund managers, CTAs, everyone's chasing whatever bit of good news there is. And it gives us this massive erratic shock up. And it's a good thing to understand. And actually, dip buying flipping works. Dip buying really, really works. And what do I mean by that? Literally, look at the data. If you bought the S&P, on a down day, and then hold it for one day, buy it on the down day, hold it for one day, you've done really, really, really well since the 80s. In this box here, you made some really serious returns if you did that. Didn't used to work before the 80s, but since the 80s it has. Why? Dip buying was invented, right? So am I encouraging you to do that? No because I don't encourage you to do anything. I wouldn't want to give you financial advice, but I want you to understand that it's actually statistically over the last like 40 years, a good idea to buy the flip and dip. I mean, in the S&P, that is not on any old junk, you know, I'm not telling you to buy GameStop. Now, this is 
how much the Fed or how much the market has underestimated Fed, the Fed by massively, more than ever before. So the real question is, are we underestimating the Fed right now? The Fed, in my opinion, will keep rates higher until something breaks. Now, last well, this year in March, four banks broke, but they didn't have to really step in that much. They just chucked the banks some money, but they're still shredding money and they still kept raising rates. But what's happened in 2013 and onwards is that politicians and Fed presidents believe that we can't handle stuff. We're not made for it, right? So they're saying we can't even handle a minor crash. We became these soft pansies in 2013. And these on here are all the moments when the Fed has like basically bailed us out somewhat. So all we need for this, these high interest rates to go away is for something to break. And that's going to happen. There is always some corrupt idiot in a bank somewhere. There's rumors around about U UBS, for example, at the moment, there's always something, right? That's all we need. So wait for that moment and then buy the flipping dip, right? So if you ever wake up and the market's down massively, start buying or maybe use options to leverage it and get a better outcome. And everybody's gonna do that. Why is everybody gonna do it? Well, everyone's gonna sell off like mad. Because everybody now identifies as a CTA, which is an algo fund, an algorithm driven, it's a computer program that trades on what the chart does, right? It's not a human being. It's just like, it's going down, sell, 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 sell. It's going up, buy, 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 buy. That's basically what CTAs do, they chase. But everybody has become a CTA. Everybody wakes up every morning and goes, oh my God, Tesla is up 4%, let's buy it. Oh my God, Tesla's down 5%, let's sell it. That seems to be what's going on in everybody's minds and everyone's chasing momentum. And that means we get more volatile markets. We get more erratic markets. So what do you need to do? Well, I would say two things. Uh, Tim says the like button is broken. That's a fact. Is, 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 is Tim right? That's what I want to know. Press, press, press it. See what happens. Two things I want you to do. One is learn to hedge. I've got a video out called never lose money again. Just, just type it in. Never lose money, Felix, uh, or never, yeah, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll find it. Because it means when the market crashes, you're making money and you can do it for free. It's really simple. Everybody should be doing it. This is the cheapest moment to hedge your portfolio in like 10 years. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Five years is probably more accurate. You really, really want to have great risk management in place because stuff will break again. The market will tank again. The market will crash again. And it'll go up again after that. But if your risk management is shitty and you don't believe in it, you're going to sell at the bottom of the market again. You're going to miss the rally up and you're going to buy it too late, which is always what people do, right? So don't be that guy or girl. I know there are two or three women tuning into this. So, you know, we need, we need to be inclusive, don't we? <laughs> now, one more data point here. But I noticed today, and that is, uh, and uh, Vix, you've got a very appropriate name, screenshot, uh, screen name. We will, we will look at a, um, at a Vix trade in a moment, which is going to blow the socks off people, how exciting that is. They go, darling, I've just watched the most exciting thing ever on YouTube. Uh, do you know what the Vix index is? Can I interest you in a little volatility? And I really am surprised sometimes that people actually view these videos, given how detailed the crap is that we talk about. But uh, there we are. Um, this is the financial condition index in blue. This is financial conditions. You see, I can write long words. And I'm a former banker. You see, we, 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 can, we, can, we can spell. People don't believe that usually. And then the yellow thing is the S&P 500. And what do you see? Financial conditions have massively come down. This is November 2020. 
They went up really, really, really tight over the year. And now they are coming down and down and down and down. And you have to ask yourself, is the Fed OK with this? Because they would rather financial conditions stay tighter for longer because that helps them tank the economy and, and bring inflation down after somebody printed $4 trillion of money. I'm sure it wasn't anybody at the Fed. They're far too responsible and intelligent to do something as moronic as that. But somebody did. Somebody left the printer on. So you can see the S&P is going up because financial conditions are, are easing, right? So it um, makes me think Fed presidents are going to be told in the next few weeks, or at least if this continues on December 13th, we might get a Jerome Powell in who's a little bit tougher on us because he wants this blue line here to start ticking up again, right? So what, watch that. You can, it's the, the ticker is NFCI, National Financial Conditions Index. It matters. It honestly matters a lot. Now, talking about fear and VIX and volatility and all the excitement that gets you all giddy inside. The VIX index, which tells you how much are we expecting the S&P to move up and down by, right? How volatile do we expect the market to be? Now, we're down here. That's really, 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 really low, you can tell, for a really, really, really long period of time, to be very specific. So everyone's saying it's going to go up. JP Morgan put out a piece today saying it's going to go up next year. So what can you do? How can you make money out of that? The simplest way, well, okay. <laughs> not the simplest way. Sorry about that. We don't really go for simple here, do we? We go for um, profitable, I think is the word we're looking for. Here's a trade idea. And this screenshot is from options watch .io, which is, an, is, an, is, a, is a website we've developed to make it easy for you to visualize this stuff. And I know options don't come across as a simple thing. I totally get that. When I first learned it, I was like, what? Um, but honestly, it's the best thing I ever learned. So what I've done here, it's called a long put butterfly. It doesn't fly. But as long as volatility stays slightly higher where we are right now, slightly higher, we could make like a 75% return. If it goes a lot higher, we could make a 19% return. So it's kind of an interesting setup, right? If you think it's just gonna like Santa rally and everything, it's just gonna bob along sideways, we actually make the most money. If it goes up a lot because something breaks, we make 19%. How expensive is this trade? $84, you know, not that bad, is it? $84? So obviously you could make it bigger if you wanted to. So I set it up here until January 17th to give us a little bit of room for something to break. Um, I tend to make my VIX trades a little bit too long and maybe that's a that's an error. You could obviously make it a, make a, sh a shorter trade. Uh, so that ticker is called VIX, V-I-X, V-I-X. Just play with it in optionswatch.io. Uh, there are other ways you could do it. By call options, you could... Well, I couldn't find I couldn't find any calls down here. There aren't any. So these lines, these green lines are calls where they're positioned and the red ones are puts. And there aren't any calls down here. So I couldn't do a trade with calls, which is what I really wanted to do. So I, I used puts instead. But the idea here that we benefit from rising volatility. There are other things you could do. You could buy a call spread on the... S&P or IWM or, or something like that. But, you know, there is there's different different ways of, of, of playing with that. But seriously, um, head over to optionswatch.io. Links also down below in the description. There's a 30-day free trial. You get full access to everything, all the data, live data, pre-market data uh, and everything else and, and play around with it a little bit. And it might confuse you and that's okay. There's some lessons on there, some videos uh, and, and it'll just get you curious about the mad world that we live in and how it really works. And then if you want to learn some more, links down below. There's a very subtle banner at the bottom of the screen, I believe, called felixfriends.org slash webinar. And I'll then walk you through an actual trading protocol. From how do we set up the trade? When do we set up the trade? How do we automatically exit with profit or limited downside? How is it all automated? And how we can do that in a couple of hours a week? It's not particularly difficult, um, but it needs to be learned and taught. So. 
join me, Felix Fenster Rockstar webinar next Wednesday, uh, 6 a.m. Um, How can you tell what's buying or selling an options watch? Okay, let me let me show you the the live app. You see that here? Red is selling, green is buying. We've color co color coded it. So if you're buying a call, it's green. If you're selling one, it's 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 red. Uh, and then up here in the top right, hang on. Let me get this to fit the screen. Here on the top right, you can select different strategies. So you can do simple stuff like just buy a long call or something like that. Um, and um, if you want to do something a little more complex, like what I just did here, then you can mess around with these to your heart's content. It's a fun thing to do. It, it gives you like, because it's so visual, right? You see, you see the gray line, that's your break even line where it goes from red to green. That's your break even. So you can move, move that about to your heart's content and see what happens. Um, Vitamin B there, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, that's um, very kind of you to say. Um, Pedro, fix the like button. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any questions you have? This is a live session. You can ask me questions and I shall do my utmost to answer them. Shall we have another look at the live market possibly as well? I think we probably ought to. Let me just hit refresh on this. Somewhat muted reaction to this. Does that mean people are worried about a recession? Maybe the big R? Well, Apple is up. That's always a good thing. Where Apple goes, the market goes. The big tech guys are basically flat after a decent day yesterday. Amazon is down a bit. And that could be consumer spending slowing down. I could, could have something to do with that. Uh, PCE is lower inside matters. 0%. 0%. We're expecting 0 0.2. Uh, so that's definitely uh, brilliant. So I would say this is positive. Market's kind of flat so far, but it is uh, still seven minutes before the market opens. And I don't know, maybe everybody's drunk. So that's where we are. Let's have a look at media reaction to this. Bloomberg coming out saying, economy slowed in recent weeks with inflation, labor cooling, stock futures rise on Fed-friendly economic data. That's the way I would agree with that as well. Fed's daily says rates in a very good place, not considering. Okay, they all been, have been told to say we're not considering cuts. We're not thinking about it. No, we're not thinking about it. It's a little bit like an alcoholic saying, I'm not thinking about the bottle of scotch on my table. No, I'm not thinking about it. Don't mention it, you know. Uh, a little unbelievable. But um, Kissinger passed away. Mixed comments I see on social media on, on him. I, I don't know that much about him, to be honest with you. I just seen him talk a lot, fairly intelligently, about lots of things, but I uh, don't know that much about him, really, other than his sort of China stuff. But um, there we go. Uh, Munger yesterday, Kissinger today. Huh? It's that, what is it with this end of the year? Why do all the great people always die pretty much in December? Anyone noticed? Is it a fear of Christmas presents or something? I, I'm not sure. People seem to always die in December. I don't know why. Um, Citadel and peers are part of the same trades. Ooh, really? Apparently, regulators are looking looking at that till they get a big brown envelope, and then they won't. Will says JAC could be the next swap partner for Neo. That would make sense, wouldn't it? They know each other. <laughs> they know each other rather well. Um, Musk interview. Um, you mean the bit where he told people to um, fuck off, that bit? Paul Evans, no, no, the gross margins for MasterCard and Visa are literally like 98% or something crazy like that. You think it's wrong? Visa gross margin 
80% for the quarter. Somewhere out there. Um, 82% Guru Focus says. It's somewhere out there. Somewhere. You know, you, you will never find, Alpha Career says it's 100%. So you will never find perfect data on anything, by the way. It doesn't exist. But it's, they do have insanely good gross margins, which is why they are insanely great businesses. Taxes are paid at the end of the year. Like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Let someone else deal with that. Um, you know, buying presents cheap bastards. <laughs> uh, uh, Mustafa, it's very kind of you to say this guy's program is worth it. As a fairly new student, I've learned a lot and recommend it. Uh, welcome to the program, Mustafa. Um, Super happy to have you have you here and have you learn. That's really what this is all about. Get people to learn, become better investors, become trader, better traders. And for you to get to financial freedom so you can live off your money. Make your money work for you rather than you work for your money, right? I could say that a thousand times a day. That's what separates the 1% from the 99%. Honestly, it's mindset. It's really, really mindset. When is tax due in Hong Kong? Um, about... January, about January usually, um, income tax, that is. No, hang on. That's corporate tax. Um, I don't pay income tax. Well, I do, but very, very little. Um, I pay corporate tax instead. There's no double tax taxation, which is, which is very, very nice of them. So if you own a company, if you pay company taxes, you won't pay taxes on your, on your income. You pay out of the company. It's very, very generous. So it's a, it's a very, very business-friendly place from that point of view. So yeah, data here, PCE index month on month, 0%, 0% inflation. Uh, we should see a pretty decent party from that. So far, the market is muted, I would say. Joe, why is Amazon? Why is Amazon taking a beating? Is it the consumer spending thingy? It's a week's chart. It's a day chart. Let's have a look. Amazon bulls is AI ever? Uh, no, doesn't really tell us. I suspect it might be the potential softening of consumer spend, and it's also had a pretty glorious rally, right, uh, above the September highs here and, and and so on. But yeah, just pulling back a little bit. Spark, if your message gets blocked, we have a bot um, that's a little vicious. Capitalization, it doesn't like. It doesn't like a lot of emojis. That's probably it. So if you're using capitals, that'll probably do it. Victor, you also recently joined us. Very helpful. Great coaching. Uh, love to hear it, Victor. That's really uh, music to my ears because that's exactly what we want to do. We want to have everybody have an amazing experience. We want everybody to come out of this smelling of money. <laughs> That's really it. Uh, and, and that gives me great satisfaction. And I get lovely messages from so many people every single day, which is my daily dopamine hit. So I don't need any drugs. And um, I'm incredibly grateful for you guys because it's your desire and your mindset to want to learn that's actually making this happen, right? I can provide the coaches and the structures and the teaching and the life trading and all of that, but I need you guys to show up for it and actually want to learn. And I, I, I love that so many of you uh, are doing that. Um, thousands of you are doing that. So NVIDIA is a little flat this morning. Microsoft is a little flat this morning. Apple is so surprising, isn't it? People are actually starting to get worried about the recession. Are they in the big R? Is bad data suddenly bad data? We will no longer celebrate having more unemployed people like some sort of moral vacuum, apparently it might start to change. Um, Popcorn Lover, do you think Neo is a good buy right now? I just think you still have to expect a lot of volatility, something trading at the bottom range of its trading zone for absolute ages. It's still a falling knife. So what's happening with the battery swaps is definitely good news, national standards and all of that. Um, but... The market cares about margins and revenue at this point. That's what we want to hear about. We'll hear more about that on the fourth, right? So um, 
I'm always cautious buying falling knives, but it depends on the length of your time horizon, how diversified you are, and you know, all that sort of stuff. Gary, can you have Visa and PayPal in the same portfolio? I can't see what the objection is to it. They're quite different businesses. Ding, ding, ding. Do you still think Path's a good stock? I like the business. I like the product. Um, now, depends again on your time horizon, but look at look how volatile this thing is, right? It, it does this and that. It does this and that, right? And here and, you know, what's, what's next, right? So if you're dealing with very volatile stocks like this, why not be a little patient and why not buy it, say, below the 200-day moving average line? which would be there and there and down here and down there. I know it's not that much fun, but it's way cheaper than buying it at the top every time, right? So that's that's the way I, I would look at that. And you could also do something with, with options, of course. Um, say we go on to path here, just type in path into options, watch.io, and a bunch of things you could do if the page loads, when it does, when it will. Volatility is sort of decent-ish. Um, hang on, move this up a little bit. Why is it off screen? There we go. So you could do a bunch of stuff. I mean, you could go out into January, say, um, if you're bullish on this, just see how low you can go. Do something like this, where your break even is at $17 rather than the 20 right now where we are at. And you can get, in theory, a 20% return, 77% chance of profit. That might be a little bit more appealing, you know, than, than that. Or you could simply sell a put. And then if the stock drops below... 1855, you get shares at 1855, which is better than at 2021, right? And if it doesn't, well, you make 8%. So, you know, there's always different ways of looking at stuff that can be a little bit smarter. So uh, go and play with the app, optionswatch.io. Links down below as well. And any other questions, folks? Um, let me know. Path of numbers out today. Yes, so you might want to wait till after those numbers come out today. Uh, 30th of November, um, I guess post-market then, right? So yeah, maybe wait for that. Earnings are pretty big events for them, uh, pretty volatile on that, so might be a good thing to wait out. Lost in BKK, he says, don't marry a stock. Not saying you have to trade stocks. No, no, no. I think you can you can build long term positions. Absolutely. You don't have to trade them either. I don't really trade the stocks I I, I own. I just trade whatever it makes me the best trade. Uh, but what I'm saying is, what I, the point I was trying to make is, you know, there are people out there who have a hundred percent Palantir portfolio or a hundred percent Tesla portfolio or something. And when you look at that, you have access to the greatest stock market in the world with at least. 30 amazing companies, not 500, but at least 30. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that and buy those 10, 20, maybe even 30? That's what I'm saying. I, I just think tying your personal wealth to one company is insane. Look at someone like Bill Gates, who made all this money with Microsoft. What did he do? He was always selling Microsoft shares and he was buying other things for them because you wanted to diversify, right? And that's the smart thing you, 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 you need to do. So don't be the, don't think you need to make all your money with one stock. It doesn't bloody matter what it is. So I would, I would diversify. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you need to do anything with your position. It's just about, it's about what else you've got. Nikon says, so many Danish people only hold one stock like Novo or Vestas. Well, they are the only two companies you have, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, also this thinking that if you live in a country, you only have to own your, the, the companies in your country. Like, what's the sense in that? Like, there is something called the New York Stock Exchange. We all have access to it. Uh, so, um, Will says, indices falling. 
falling, falling, falling. Let's have another look at what is looking. I mean, with Apple up, it's probably not quite enough. Amazon is going to pull things down a little bit here, and, and these guys are a bit flat. But if you look at the data, it's it's pretty supportive, I would say. So I don't think this is like a panic station type stuff. Mantles keep saying WW International. I don't know what that is. No idea what that is. I can't really give you much of a, of, a, of a view on that, honestly. Not the faintest idea what they do or who they are. All I can tell you, it's a falling knife and a half. Nothing good happens below the 200-day moving average line, which is where they are. So, sorry, that's the only thing I can tell you on that. Coupang, I was never a fan of that. Uh, when they listed, I did a bunch of videos on Coupang. People didn't like it because I was very bearish on Coupang. I, I, I just... I think this analogy that they're the Amazon of South Korea just isn't true. I think they've got like 16% market share or something like that. At least they did then. So I thought it was an overvalued business then. Uh, I don't know if it is now. I haven't looked at it much. Um, huge earnings miss. It's never a good thing when you miss your earnings by 30%. So don't know why it's down 5%. Does it say why? Doesn't say why, so so I can't I can't tell you why, but um yeah it's a it's a big drop back down to November lows here, so it's um you know if you think about where this thing listed, I think you get the idea why I said don't buy it at the listing right it's listed at forty forty five dollars or something like that it's trading at fifteen so um probably won't go back up to forty five that'd be my view on that honestly if soft banks involved be very careful. Um, Paul, okay, I, I love you playing with our S&P spreadsheet. Um, in a sense, the idea is that if you have really great companies, the stock price is less important. Um, but you can come up with something that's a little bit more sophisticated, obviously, which would be buy below a certain moving average, maybe. So every time the stock drops below the 100-day or the 200-day moving average or the 30-week moving average or something like that, you only buy it there. And that way you tend to buy things cheaper. So say if you bought below, say if you bought Microsoft below the 200-day moving average, well, you would have bought this period here only in recent times, which is quite good, really. So don't be, if you want to take one lesson from Charlie Munger is people feel this need to be active. You're building a big stock portfolio, don't be active. Um, if you can't handle the stress of it, automate it. Buy $1,000 of stocks on the first of every month or whatever. Make it automated. Just, just let it do its thing. You'll also do great. So you don't need to do this, but you'll also do great. But if you want to get more into it, then yeah, I would set up a, a rules-based system. You got to write out the rules. You got to print them out and you got to put them somewhere where you see them. Otherwise, you won't follow them. You can't just make them up. You won't follow them. Trust me. So you got to write, write it out. Uh, Unter, um, nice to see you on the chat here. I haven't seen you on here for a while. Uh, is new worth a trade? I've never done a deep dive into new. Um, the numbers look pretty good. Yeah. But I don't really know that much about the business, to be honest with you. So you'd have to do a little bit of research on that. Um, BYD down 15%. Well, are they? It was on. It was. Looks like a nice recovery from the earnings disaster. So they're kind of making out with the 50-day moving average line here. So yeah, it's still a falling knife. Still is. And I think that's just like Chinese economy. I think that's really what it's all about. I think that's the, the fundamental reason there. Um, Scorpion Baba. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a hot mess, basically. It's a hot mess. I, I would say, um, not at all time lows or anything like, like that, but um, it's just so unclear what they're going to do and how they're going to do it uh, that that I, I'm, I don't really know what to do with it. 
If you have a bigger position on it, maybe sell covered calls on it. Honestly, I'm not usually a huge fan of that, but it's a, it's an exit strategy. You know what I mean? So look at Baba. Okay, IV is very low. You're not going to get a lot of money for that. But um, let's have a look. So this is optionswatch.io, guys. You can sign up to this. It's uh, There's a free 30-day trial. There's a link down below. Say till the end of the month, uh, short call. Obviously, you're going to want to move that up a bit. Say to 85 or something like that. So you'd get paid 18%. For that, because it's a very volatile stock, you could go a little higher if you don't want to get, sell the shares. So the risk is that you might sell the shares at $85. Right? Sorry, you get paid, that's more like at 3%. That's about right. Yeah, that's about right. So as long as it stays above 85, you make 3% in the month. If it goes to 85, you sell the stuff. That's basically the trade. So you could make them weekly or monthly, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a reasonable way to exit a position. And that's what I've done. Loads of students of mine who come to me and say, look, I've got this dud, like usually innovation portfolio and all the stuff is down massively. And we just keep doing this and, and they want to sell, right? They do actually want to sell, but they'd right like to sell a little higher. So we just pick a price point where they're willing to sell and then we just keep these going and they make some money. And then at some point it, the stock recovers a bit and then you exit. And it's a, it's a good way to, to automate that process. Michael, you don't know how to do a sell like a covered call through my broker. What's your broker, Michael? It's honestly not, not that hard. Um, it's literally this. You go into your broker and you sell an $85 call. Um, and there is, there's a date and there's a price. That's all there is to it. Just two, two factors. The, the date and selling a call. It might say, it'll say sell a call. It really isn't very, very tricky. Um, it's worth learning, honestly. Like you were sure you're a very, very intelligent man, Michael. Um, you've learned much, much more complicated things than this. So don't let it be a hurdle that it looks a bit confusing at the beginning. Brokers suck, right? So that's why we do this. So it's a lot more visual and we can, we can, we can look at stuff. Um, Saxo Bank. Yeah, they have, they have options trading. The fees are pretty high, but they have options trading. Um, but yeah, they, they, they do. So they'll, they'll, they'll do it for you if you want something a bit more user-friendly, but you've got your portfolio in there. So maybe stick with them. Um, if you don't have enough shares to sell a covered call, um, yeah, you need 100 shares. Well, yeah, it's, it doesn't quite work the same way. If volatility is really low, like it is on Barba, you could... Um, Yeah, it doesn't really work that well. You could do a bad put, maybe, above the market. No, there aren't any puts, though. Yeah, not that easy, sorry to say. Not that easy. Um, okay, we're going Dutch on the chat. Um, all righty, ho, guys. I love you tuning in. I um, want to encourage you to do one thing and one thing only, and that is come and... Well, two things, actually. One is, if you want to play with this and get a little bit more into you know, understanding how the option stuff works, just go to optionswatch.io. There's a 30-day free trial. Take advantage of it. And and secondly, you see the dates at the bottom here, right? Grab yourself a seat for next week's live trading training. Uh, I'll teach you how to trade one stock, three rules, fully automated, profit-taking, risk management, all of it. I'll give you the whole protocol for free. It'll be live. It won't be on YouTube. Felix Frenzel.org slash webinar. Grab one of the seats before they go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in.